Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan, and today I'm going to show you how to form a double flare for a brake line. Now, a double flare is useful for brake lines and transmission lines, but a single flare is also useful, like I'll show later on in this video, for fuel, old school fuel lines, but Today we're going to be primarily focusing on a brake line because that's typically what you're going to be using a double flare for. And I'm even going to show you how to bend brake lines without breaking them. So before we get started, some people like to measure out their brake line and then cut it. Some people like to uh, bend it and then cut it. Some people like to measure it out and measure it perfectly. There's a bunch of different ways and a bunch of different applications why you might do things in different orders as far as cutting and flaring and bending go. So I'm going to give you the tools you need in order to cut, bend, and flare and then you can apply it to your vehicle because it's going to differ a ton from vehicle to vehicle. So before we get started today, let's go over the tools we're going to be using in our brake line creation journey. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is cut your line. And how you're gonna do that is one of these bad boys. Sometimes they look like this, sometimes they look like this, but they all basically do the same thing. They have a little wheel in there and you put the line where my finger is, tighten this down and rotate it around, tighten it down, rotate it around until the line comes apart. Never use like a pair of uh, side cutters or something to try to cut a line. Always use one of these rotational cutters. And this one's kind of cool because it'll bail you out. Uh, see the rollers are a little offset there, so let's say you have a line like this and you forgot to put the flare nut on because everybody does at one point or another. This will put the flare in there and cut it off as closely as possible. So this one's really cool. It's not super typical though. And if you don't forget your flare nut, you'll never have to use it. So this collet piece here, you can see it has a bunch of different measurements on there. Um, for brakes, you're pretty much only going to use the middle one, the 3 16 one. The brake line goes in there and is held in place and clamped down. We'll go over this more later, but you absolutely need one of these. Uh, this kit I have happens to have two of them in there, but the kit you can rent or buy uh, is just going to have one of these bad boys. And you can rent these for free at AutoZone, I'm pretty sure. And probably the most important part here are these little bits. See these bits here? This one is for brakes or at least for the, this size tube. So it's going to fit in there like this. And that's going to create our little bubble flare. Then we have to double flare it. So this is really important for when you're selecting what line it goes to. And this one's massive. Check that out. I don't think there's anything on my car that uses that. But like this one would probably be good for a transmission line or something. So you just got to select your uh, correct fitting there and you can do that with trial and error and just you know fit it in there. If it's like this, that's the correct one. Now for the star of the show, this is the actual thing that's going to do the flaring for us. It has a nice little pointed bit there. It'll lock down like this on our flaring tool. I'll show you more of that in a moment and uh, create our first flare because we have to flare two times. A few more pieces of equipment some people would say is optional but I really like having them because it creates a nice good flare. It is a good flat file so you can file it down nice and flat. And I like using this pick tool to put into the line so the hole remains concentric with the outside of the tube and I'll show that in just a moment. So to go over basics a pressure line like this brake line that handles a whole bunch of pressure has basically two parts. It has this double flare end that goes into a fitting and it has a flare nut that goes into the fitting and locks it down nice and snug. So these two parts are what makes these fittings special and you need a special tool to create. But it's pretty easy and straightforward, so let's get to it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is cut a piece of line into the length you want it. And the way you're going to cut it is using this nice little tool here. And it's going to go on there nice and snug like this. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then you're just going to start spinning it and tightening it. I like to do two revolutions and then tighten it. Two revolutions and then tighten it. Just make sure it's nice and tight while you're spinning it. So what that's doing is cutting a nice groove in there which will eventually come apart. Which is how you get the line to be cut. 
and we'll go over bending a little bit in this video. Like I said, it's going to be really situational on how you're going to cut and bend and measure and lengthen and shorten. The good thing is brake line is usually fairly inexpensive, so if you make a boo-boo, it's okay. Just throw it away. Try it again. I'm also holding the line in a vise. You can put it in a vise, just don't crush it to death. Uh, you, you really don't want flat spots or nothing, and I'm not reusing this line. This is here for filming purposes. Normally I would just hold it with my hand, but it would be really hard to film with my hand not being as stable as a vise, so. And there we go. We got a nice clean cut, and you can see that the concentricity isn't ruined. It's nice and circle with the uh, outside radius of the tube there. So if you need to cut something, you need to cut a brake line, always use one of these bad boys. Don't go for a pair of side cutters. So now we have a nice clean cut, we can get to double flaring. So here's a tip. See how this isn't very concentric in here? It's kind of flattened out and it's really not going to make a good flare. What we can do is put this in a vise gently. Grab that pick tool from earlier force it in there like this now take a look nice and circular that's gonna make a great flare so what we can do is put the line you want flared in here this is the part everyone messes up at least once I've done it a handful of times and it's okay if you forget because you can recut the flare and do it again you can always do everything again it's not that big a deal but this is the big key here, put the flare nut on now. Because if you don't, you'll flare this end and this nut can't go on if there's a flare here. It's the same thing, it can't come off. So you need to put the flare nut fitting on right now. And then you need to figure out what size line you have. We have 3 16 here. I mean, you can just put it on there and find out if you didn't know. So we can put that on there like this. And we're just going to put it on there lightly for now. Screw those wing nuts on a little bit. Now how you determine how big or how much line there should be sticking out the top here is with these fittings. So you gotta look at it really carefully. It needs to be the same height as the bit surface here. So these two need to be parallel so the line needs to come up about another 30 second of an inch. So let me fix that real quick. So now we can see that these two surfaces right here and right here are at the same height and we can proceed. Tighten these bad boys up. What I like to do too, is grab a hardy screwdriver, hold on to the mechanism, and tighten these butterflies up. Don't have to be crazy Hulk tight, but pretty snug. Like that. These wing nuts are on pretty tight, and we can proceed with what I like to do. This is a trick I learned from my dad is to file the top of this if it's not totally flat. You want this surface here to be super flat. You want this nice and flat so you get a real good flare out of it. A good eyeball on it, looks good. And then you say, oh man, that hole's no longer a circle. Well, we'll fix that right now. It is now a circle. Plenty of dust off of there. Now we can get to the exciting part. So what we're gonna do is take our flaring tool, slide it into position, make sure there's enough distance between the vise and the tool here so the arms of the flaring tool can get underneath it. So with our tools in place, we can grab our bits here, our correct 316 sized bit, and put it in the hole just like that. Wind our tool into its place until it's coming to rest on there. Now, when you get to this stage where it feels nice and tight, go ahead and look all around the tool to make sure the arms are flat on the tool surface and everything is nice and uh, perpendicular with each other. So that way you get a nice square flare. So while we're tightening it, we're gonna use our left hand here to grab onto this surface as a handle and we're gonna tighten it using our right. So as we wind this tool in, you can see that lots of pressure is being applied here. And it's gonna create what I like to call a bubble flare, which is the first flare in our double flare process. Keep tightening away. 
until it stops. Once you're at this stage, stop. It's not gonna flare anymore. You know, don't go any further than this. Back your tool off. Get that out of there. We can lift up our fitting. Now, look at this nice bubble flare we have. How beautiful is that? That is perfect. So, on old school fuel lines, they use just the single flare, just the bubble flare, but for anything you're watching, all brake lines require the double flare, so do transmission lines, so we have to flare it again. We move our tool back into its place, wind her down until it's in the brake line itself. Make sure it is nice and concentric and right perpendicular, just like that. And we're gonna repeat the process, holding the tool tightly and winding this bit in here. And once it stops, stop. Don't go too crazy, or you could crack the flare. Then we can remove our tool. Get our flaring tool out of there. Loosen these wing nuts. Get that tool out of there. And look at that. See, that's why it's important for the flare nut to go on before you start flaring, because there's no way to put it on once the flare has been created. So look at that. That is a perfect, absolutely perfect, double flare and you get them every time using that tool. So this is actually ready for uh, any braking hardline application. This can go on a car right now. So I wanted to get a close up here and show you how nice this double flare is. This is the one we made earlier and you can see that it is perfect. It's nice and concentric. There's no cracks, there's no chips, no gouges. If your double flare doesn't look exactly like this, just go ahead and redo it. If it doesn't look like this, your braking system will leak, has a chance of functioning poorly or not at all. So here's our brake line. Has a nice double flare on there, both sides, but almost every single time, you're not gonna need a perfectly straight line. You're gonna need to bend it somehow. And you can bend it a little bit with your hands, you know, slight angles here and there to kind of make it work and stuff. But honestly, you're going to need one of these, which is a brake line bending tool. And you just select whatever size you have here and put it in. Say, I want this at a 90 degree angle. And it's really important that you bend it this way because let's say you put the fitting back here and then you bend it. You won't be able to get the uh, fitting around a bend. This only goes when it's straight, so you want to keep it in front at all times like this when you go for a bend. And they make some pliers too that uh, work pretty well. Um, they don't work super great for trying to do like a 90 or something. Um, they do work though, but this is, this is a lot more precise. So you want to put it in our bending tool here. Now let's say I want this at a 90 degree angle, just like this. And we're just gonna bend that until those two lines meet up there. You can also just kind of eyeball it when you get to the 90 degree, just like that. And boom, we have a perfectly bent 90 degree brake line ready for installation. Before we wrap up, I wanna go over this double flare line. This is for a transmission cooler on my 1967 Camaro. See how it uses the exact same double flare thing? Even has a similar flare nut, it's just a uh, bigger size for transmission lines. And then, if you look back here, what does that look like? That looks just like the first bubble stage of the flare we did. So this is an old school fuel line and a rubber hose fits on the end of it there and uh, this barb prevents it from slipping off. So. This, this flare line skill is imperative to working on old cars and new cars because new cars still use this for the transmission coolers and brake lines. So that is how you use a double flare tool to create a brake line. It is very simple, very straightforward, and an essential skill to have if you are working on brakes or uh, even if you're doing a custom car. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.